Welcome on in. WIP Daily, Joe Gillio with you. I appreciate him. And listen, subscribing, following the podcast, of course, our YouTube feed, which we're on right now, 94 WIP. Check it out. Subscribe there. We almost, almost been doing the podcast a year now, right? Right up, uh, I think it was right about a week before the NFL draft we started last year, maybe the week of the NFL draft. So uh, it's been awesome doing the podcast. Excited to continue doing it with Tucker as well. He'll join me in a few minutes as we have a mock draft mania on a Friday and not many of these to go. I was thinking maybe the week of the draft, maybe we would do our own mock drafts uh, or maybe back and forth to do a, a consensus mock as we get to the Eagles pick. But we're going around and we're looking at different mock drafts out there and reacting to what the Eagles do. This one, NFL.com, because it feels like there is a real push for the Eagles to take a certain position in a lot of mocks. We'll get to that with this extra five-round mock draft, which is, you know, I'll click any of these, but this one got my attention. So NFL.com, Chad Reuter, five-round mock draft. Here we go. Number one, Caleb Williams, quarterback USC, Chicago Bears. Number two, Jaden Daniels to the Washington Commanders. I, I love the uncertainty, by the way, of this draft with the quarterbacks. Caleb Williams, we know, is going number one. Other than that, any order, any team you could sell me on, like is Jaden Daniels going to go to the Commanders or two? Probably. He's the favorite to, but... Minnesota brought him in for a workout. What if Minnesota trades up and Washington trades back? What if Washington takes Drake May? There's a million different combinations past Caleb Williams with the quarterback's next few picks. In this one, Jaden Daniels to the commanders. Number three, Drake May goes to the New England Patriots. Number four, in this one, now this is a surprise because in most of these mocks, it's the Vikings trading up for a J.J. McCarthy. In this one, it's the Broncos. Sean Payton and the Broncos jump ahead of Jim Harbaugh the McCarthy's old coach at college, and they go to four. So the Broncos go to four for J.J. McCarthy. Marvin Harrison goes five to the Los Angeles Chargers. Malik Neighbors, six. LSU receiver to the Giants. Joe Walt, seven to the Titans. Rome, Rome Aduze, the receiver from the, the um, Washington, goes to the Cardinals at number eight. So the Cardinals drop back and then come back up. Monty Asifort in, in um, Arizona is a really clever GM, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does something like that. So they get a receiver at eight. Dallas Turner, the edge rusher, nine, goes to the Bears. Number 10, Brock Bowers to the New York Jets. All right, let's move down here to the Philadelphia Eagles. But we don't have to go super far because in this draft, the Eagles are moving up. The Eagles make a trade with the Seattle Seahawks to get up to number 16. And they select Duke center or interior offensive lineman at he's played some guard, Graham Barton. Graham Barton, interior offensive lineman from Duke. Uh, the write-up, it says, his athleticism, toughness, and football IQ could allow him to step in in multiple spots, likely combining with Cam Jurgens and Landon Dickerson in the interior. Despite his lack of length, his play at left tackle over the past three years shows he can move outside if injuries hit that part of the depth chart. All right, so this is a tackle in college, shorter arms, likely to go inside in the NFL, probably play the guard position. Zach Martin was, um, was a similar kind of profile Coming out of Notre Dame all those years ago, obviously he's he's a Hall of Fame kind of player. But you know we've seen that before, where guys you know star on the line in college, but their measurables push them you know maybe inside the line instead of outside. So the idea of this is interesting because the Eagles get up and and get the lineman they want. Now my first instinct is if they're going up for a lineman, I think they're going up for a guy that is a future tackle that could play guard, not a guard. You know, Graham Barton strikes me as a guard. He strikes me as a center or a guard in the NFL just based on the way he's described there. I, I'd be surprised the Eagles gave up and, you know, the trade parameters is they're giving up one of their second round picks. I'd be surprised if they went up strictly for a guard. Now, if they go up for a J.C. Latham thinking he could play guard for a couple of years until Lane is done and then go out to right tackle, that I'd understand. Mims, um, you know, you go to any of these guys that are, are tackles by – you know, Guyton from Oklahoma. I get all that. And that I would do. What Am I going to move up and trade a second round pick strictly to move up for a guard? I'm probably not going to do that. But I, I think it brings up a bigger picture question here. And I, I yesterday on the, on the podcast, I talked about how I think offensive line, just overall, not so much round wise, but just need. Like if you tell me right now, Joe, here's the roster. What do you think we need to add to this before we start training camp? The first thing I'm looking at is, that offensive line depth chart is scary. Like that's not a championship offensive line depth. It might be a playoff offensive line on the starting line, but it's not a championship offensive line. The best player they lost in the offseason, J.C. Kelsey, has not been replaced. Matt Hennessy, Temple guy, 
uh, you know, had a decent run with the Atlanta Falcons, but he's more of a swing backup kind of guy. I don't love what they have on the outside at all in terms of backup. So they need offensive linemen. Now, is that going to come in the first round? Maybe. FanDuel yesterday moved the odds and now has offensive line as the favorite to be the Eagles' first player selected. So this doesn't surprise me that it's Graham Barton or Jackson Powers Johnson or Mims or Latham or Guyton or any of these guys that you've seen mocked to the Eagles. I think Fuaga is going to go too high. I mean, some of these kids are just probably going to go within the top 15. So, you know, the Eagles trading here to 16 probably gives them their best chance to get someone before they're all dried up. I'd be surprised if they traded up for an interior offensive lineman. Would not be surprised they traded up for a tackle that could play guard. You go back to last year, and I was on the Peter Skaronsky train, but the Eagles seem to be on the Parrish Johnson train. And you know, remember last year I, I mentioned uh, Asenfort, the GM in Arizona. He he moved around the board last year when they traded away their top pick to the Texans, but then they came back up and they ended up with Parrish Johnson. And I think there was a real chance if Paris Johnson fell to the Eagles, he would have been their pick. Maybe not Jalen Carter. Or maybe if Jalen Carter had gone, it would have been Paris Johnson. It felt like Carter or Johnson were the two guys the Eagles targeted and looked at as like, that's where we got to go. The defensive tackle to put on the line or the future of the offensive line. So they've taken care of the defensive tackle last year. Jalen Carter looks like he could be a star. Now it might be time on the offensive line. And I'm wondering if that's where their heads are at over at Novacare, we've talked a lot of corner. The more I think about it, the more Cooper DeGene feels like an awesome pick for the Eagles at 22. But I'm worried about the defense. You know, they may look at it as, hey, we've taken, we, we've added a lot to this defense in terms of pipeline of players the last couple of years. Now it's time to see if we're right on them, whether it be Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, the Kobe Dean, Job, Isaiah Rogers, Ricks, you know, Ringo. They, they have added a good number of players in the NFL draft, even undrafted players the last couple of years on the defensive side. There's there's some youth there where now we're going to figure out if they could play. There's not much on the offensive line. So there's a real chance the offensive line is the need. But then you get into the idea of, okay, let's say they do this. Let's say they either take a guy at 22 or they trade up for someone. In this draft, obviously, it's Graham Barton from Duke. Is that guy, you know, is there a chance that player doesn't play at all in year one? I think there is. I mean, Tyler Steen is a year into the program. He's a year into an NFL weight room. He's a year into Jeff Stoutland's program on the offensive line. The way I view this is, no matter who they take, if it's an offensive lineman in round one, left tackle is set, left guard is set, center is likely set, the right guard position is up for grabs, and right tackle is set. So there's one spot, barring injury, that that player, whoever it is, and Graham Barton, you, you pick your guy. I think Tyler Guyton is a real possibility out of Oklahoma. He's been working out with Lane Johnson. But whatever the name is, there's one spot for them to play, and that's right guard. So it'd be a camp battle between Tyler Steen, who has some guard tackle versatility, and 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 the offensive lineman that they end up with in the first round. And I'm wondering and curious if if everyone would be okay with the Eagles basically redshirting a first year player. It doesn't happen very often because other than offensive line. You can work the player in. Now, some guys play a lot their rookie year. Some guys play a little bit. Uh, obviously, last year, Jalen Carter played a lot. Nolan Smith played a little bit. The year before, Jordan Davis was playing a role, a certain amount of snaps. Then he got hurt, and it fell off, and you know he didn't play as much down the stretch. But he, was, he played. He was on first downs in the first half of his rookie year. Jordan Davis was on the field a good amount. You know, We're talking about 25% of the snaps, maybe overall, before the injury. It's pretty rare. Now, quarterback's different. If you have an incumbent at quarterback, the guy might sit for a while. But it's really rare, unless the guy can't play, that a player, I mean, defensive line, you rotate in. Linebacker, you probably rotate in. Defensive back, you get him on the field. Obviously, on offense, you could you could get him on the field at times. It's rare to have a first-round pick, especially because you know that value of the first-round pick, it, it deteriorates by the day. You, know, you want to maximize those four or five years you get with the player but there's a chance, just because Tyler Steen's a year into the program, that he would beat out a Graham Barton to be the right guard. And Graham Barton's your swing offensive lineman for the entire year, which is valuable. Big V played that role. Eagles won a Super Bowl when he had to come in for an injury. You know, we've seen guys like that. Jack Driscoll did that for a little while. They lost Driscoll. They lost Opeta. They lost Kelsey. They've lost a lot on this offensive line. So, in theory, I get it. I think it makes sense. I think their biggest need right now is offensive line. 
And if you tell me they're going to draft for a need in the first round, well, then they're going to take an offensive lineman because they just don't have bodies there. And if they have an injury or two, it could torpedo the entire season. That being said, two parts of this that I, I kind of just like raise my eyebrows at one trading a second round pick and, and not a, not the last pick in the second round, like 50 or 53 to get up, to get an interior offensive lineman that feels a little bit risky. And the second part is, are we all okay? Are the Eagles okay drafting a player in the first round that if everything goes right, doesn't see the field in his first year in the NFL? I, I don't know that, that, that is a, it's pretty rare. You get that in the NFL these days, unless it's a quarterback, Tucker Graham Barton, the latest name. And, and he's just one offensive lineman, right? There's, there's like seven or eight names out there. They've kind of been connected to, they could take, but I think offensive line is their biggest need. It's just a matter of, are they okay with taking someone that might be a backup their entire first season? Yeah. And it obviously hasn't prevented them from taking guys in the second or third round, right? Like think about all the guys they've taken to replace Jason Kelsey. Now, finally they get to play, but the first guy that they drafted to do that, was Isaac Sayamalo back in 2016, and not only did he last two contracts here, he, he signed a big deal in Pittsburgh last season. But I think it's interesting. Like, if you were to rank every position group on the Eagles, right, it, just in terms of talent or, or kind of where they stack up against the NFL, the offensive line would be pretty high, right? I, I think they're starters in the top-end talent. Um, a lot of people are bullish on you. have three pro bowlers on, on the starting offensive line, and Dickerson, Mylotta, and Lane Johnson. You have two guys with, with kind of blue-chip talent. In Jurgens stepping in, maybe Steen or maybe whoever they, they take. Like they, there is talent there, I think, comparatively to the rest of the NFL. But based on how the Eagles evaluate and based on how the Eagles prioritize offensive line, this is a little bit uh, of a down down year compared to what they, they normally have. And that's going to happen when you lose a Hall of Fame center. But I, I look at kind of what they can do, and it does fit what they like to do. In, in the first round, right? Like they don't like to take guys who fill an immediate need in the first round. They don't like spending their first round talent on a guy that they're desperate to, to start week one. And I think if you take someone like Barton, who maybe could step in and, and play center uh, day one, he, he could play guard if, if they feel more comfortable leaving Jurgens or Dickerson to center. I, I think it just, it fits kind of the MO of this team where they like drafting guys in the first round who, are rotational players. Now the offensive line are not going to have a rotational guy like you would defensive end or, or cornerback, but having a guy who can sit there, who can learn from Jeff Stoutland for a year, who can maybe rotate with Tyler Steen or, or whoever it is at, at right guard, there's going to be injuries on the offensive line. So he's probably going to play a little bit there and then have him step in to the starting role in, in you know, year two. I just think it fits with what the Seagulls team has really done under Howie Rose. Well, it would, and they prioritize that position. I mean, I, I could hear Howie after the draft talking about how we built through the trenches. This is what we do. And every year we do this where it's like, maybe they'll take a wide receiver. And they and they did. Uh, obviously, it's a couple of years with Rager and, and Devontae Smith. Maybe they'll take a corner. They haven't in, in, in two decades. Maybe they'll do this. Maybe this year for a linebacker. And typically, what do they do in the first round? Quarterback, offensive line, defensive line, edge. I mean, this, they, they have, this is why the odds are what they are. It's why the reality is what it is. And it's why they've been good. It's why the Eagles floor is very high, you know, other than, you know, a couple of really just out of nowhere, injury plagued, terrible seasons of 2012 and 2020, this team doesn't bottom out. I mean, they, they don't get really bad. They, they just, because they have good line play on both sides. So I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not going to yell about it. I'm not going to get angry about it. My one sticking point on this particular mock and Chad Reuters and NFL.com, the idea of, of going up for, you know, for Graham Barton is if I'm going to use an extra asset, it's one thing if Tyler Guyton's on the board of 22, he's raw, he may be really good in three years, he may be a pro bowler down the line, he's a future right tackle, he works out with Lane, he's got the Oklahoma connection, could play guard, I'm good with that. But I, if I'm trading up and I'm going to surrender another asset, I'd like the player ideally to be a future tackle. Guard in the moment, sure. But I, I, I'm looking out, like, can he be the heir apparent to Lane? And if this guy's got short arms and he's more of an interior offensive lineman, I'm not sure if, if Graham Barton is the, is the right guy to, to trade up for. Get, go get J.C. Latham. Give me someone that has big-time potential down the line as a tackle. But the idea of the Eagles getting an offensive lineman, potentially trading up for one, I, I wouldn't discount it. I'd almost be ready for it as we get ready for the 2024 NFL draft. Do the Eagles need to draft an offensive lineman early? Yeah, they certainly do, because this thing is really paper thin beyond those stars that Tucker talked about. Appreciate everyone listening, subscribing, following WIP Daily. 
We'll talk soon. Have a great weekend.